Six Flags Great America made the big announcement that they will be receiving Max Force, a new launch coaster in 2019. This is from SNS, and I think easily this is becoming one of the coasters people are most excited about when it debuts next year. It's not going to be a super long ride, but man, is Great America packing it in. This ride will be breaking three world records. I think two out of the three are records no one really cared about, but the first one is pretty cool. It is the fastest accelerating coaster in North America. That is awesome. It'll go from zero to 78 miles per hour in less than two seconds. That is stupid fast. To put that in perspective, Do to Donpa at Fuji Q Highland goes 0 to 111 in 1 1.6 seconds. That has the record for the world's fastest acceleration. So that is over 30 miles per hour faster. But what this is more similar to is Hypersonic XLC at King's Dominion. That went 0 to 80 miles per hour in 1.8 seconds. Like I said, this is going 0 to 78 in less than 2 seconds, meaning it's probably around 1.8. So in other words, it's going to have approximately the same feeling you got if you ever got around to riding Hypersonic XLC. And that ride, while it was at King's Dominion, it was also by SNS, and like Max Force, it had a pretty short layout. This ride, the launch, is definitely going to be the highlight, but it's going to do some pretty cool stuff as well. The second two records it breaks is the tallest double inversion in the world. So it's not the tallest inversion in the world, but it's the tallest inversion when there's two of them, I guess. I don't know how that makes sense, but whatever, it's Six Flags. And then it has the fastest inversion in the world. That's actually kind of cool. I mean, I don't know if I could tell you what the fastest inversion before Max Force was. I also am not sure I really cared, but it's still pretty cool to think that Max Force is going to be taking a zero G roll at 60 miles per hour. That is pretty fast. So the rest of the stats go, we got that double inversion at 175 feet off the ground. There's a total of five inversions and it is the 17th coaster in the park. Now remember, this park has been expanding like crazy. The last coaster before this they got was Joker, which opened in 2017. Before that was Goliath in 2014, then X-Flight in 2012, Little Dipper in 2010, Dark Knight in 2008, so they're adding a coaster like every other year. It is insane. And how they're managing to squeeze this ride in is remarkable. Here's a Google Earth view in case you aren't too familiar with Great America, where they're fitting this in. They're removing the Pictorium building near the water park and kind of using that as the station area and then launching it and it's kind of winding all around the train tracks. If you watch this animation, just look how close this thing is going over. First of all, it is going to launch underneath the train tracks and then it is going to be flying over it. So now suddenly everyone is going to be wanting to ride the train, one, to film construction updates while this is being built, and then two, to get footage of it once it's actually open. So that's pretty incredible. The ride is really kind of tucked in between Wizard and Raging Bull. That double inversion is right near Raging Bull's first turnaround. So it's pretty cool what they're doing here. 2019 is really shaping up to be the year of the launch coaster. And SNS is debuting two new coasters in America, and both of them look pretty cool. Steel Curtain, which breaks the record for most inversions in America, and then this breaks the fastest acceleration record. Now, I'm a little worried because SNS coasters have somewhat built up a reputation for experiencing a lot of downtime in the past, so I really hope that this coaster, we don't really see that as an issue. It is a compressed air launch, which is kind of notorious for causing issues, and when you pair them up with Six Flags, I just don't know what kind of ratio we're looking at with uptime versus downtime. I really do hope for the best, but man, I am kind of worried about it. But it is still cool to see that we are seeing a compressed air launch coaster come to America when I can't even remember the last time we had one. Gosh, must have been Hypersonic XLC and that thing closed years ago. So this is pretty amazing. These launches are forceful. This ride is going to be forceful. You're going to be launching straight out, go over this, what will probably be like an ejector bunny hill, straight up 175 feet into a double inversion. That's kind of giving me Karnan vibes, how that thing just shoots you straight up into the air. I imagine that's going to be a gray out moment. You're going to be twisting around, diving back down, running up against the train tracks through a few more inversions. And I also want to point out how close that last inversion gets to the water park. The supports for it are in the water park. So now, much like the train, people are going to be wanting to go into Hurricane Harbor so that they can get shots of Max Force. Last thing I want to point out, this is a little disappointing to me. This is kind of giving me full throttle vibes. The brakes for this coaster are on the last inversion. 
Six Flags was clever with how they edited together this video. They don't really show you it, much like how they didn't show you that with Full Throttle when that was announced, but you can sort of tell here that the brakes are starting on that last inversion. I imagine that's probably for two reasons. One, the amount of space they had to work with, because remember, this is a really tight plot of land, so they just have to start the brakes early. And then the other reason is I imagine that because this is Six Flags, they've always kind of been the budget-friendly company. They buy their product in bulk. A lot of their coasters, they go for shorter layouts. And so I don't know if it was that they physically couldn't find a way to make the layout longer, but it is possible that they said, well, we want to squeeze one more inversion in there, even if it means making it not as great because we have to fit in a brake run. So I don't know which one it is, but I think this coaster is going to be a big hit when it opens next year. It'll definitely be one of the must-do rides of 2019. I think it looks a whole lot better than the last coaster Great America got, and I think it has the potential to be in the top three, maybe top two in the park. So overall, Max Force gets a thumbs up from me. The fact that it's a short ride doesn't really bother me. My biggest concern is just the uptime versus downtime ratio. But I'm not going to judge it yet. We'll just have to wait and see how that is when it debuts. But let me know down in the comments below what you think of Max Force coming to Six Flags Great America in 2019. Post all the thoughts down in the comments section below. Of course, stay tuned for more analyses coming soon to Coaster Studios.